you know, I have to admit, <laughs> when I look at this, I look around and I think, wow, how did I get here? How did I get to this place? How did God bless me? Well, you know, it would be easy if I said, oh, well, you know, I invested in Google, or I bought Facebook stock, or that I uh, somehow, you know, was a wealthy man, that, you know, I'm a rich man, yada, da 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 But I'm not. You see, I'm just a poor man. I've always been rather impoverished. Although there have been times where I've made money and enjoyed it and spent it. I didn't save it, I didn't invest it, I didn't plan for the future. I didn't use it in ways that other people might have for maybe going on those fancy vacations or you know, spending those Christian holidays someplace far away in, you know, in another land or in Alaska cruise. Matter of fact, I was so poor I couldn't even go to Bible college. I used to want every year to go to Calvary Chapel Bible College, but I couldn't afford it. So the one year that I finally got it together, enough supposed finances and was going to go, they canceled it that year. <laughs> it was rare and it was way back when, but oh well, God took care of it. And praise the Lord, I'm glad he didn't take me through that venue, but in its own way, it was good. But you know, I, I look around and I'm thankful for what God has done because everything that you see about me, all of this and all of this comes from 99 cent stores. <laughs> Shameless plug. No, but everything comes from used stores, from throwaway items, from things that people rejected, that people no longer have a use for, that I do. You know, like dumpster diving? Yeah, I know what that is because I do it. Or, you know, seeing things on the side of the road and picking them up. You know, trash that people throw out or tarps that fly off or bungee cords that get tossed away. Guess what? I use them. Or like, what's amazing to me is some of these hangers. You know, I couldn't even buy hangers at one time and yet I saw somebody throw away hundreds of these cheap hangers that they get from the cleaners, you know, that they sent their clothes back on. I was amazed. I grabbed them all. <laughs> I use those for everything. Bailing wire to plant hangers to regular hangers to anything. You know, I cut them up and use them in pieces and do all kinds of things with them. But the point is, is that God doesn't waste anything in his economy. It's not just a renewable resource like some green piece kind of greeny thing we'll say. But it's God's way of dealing with things that He wants done His way. He doesn't waste a life. He blesses life in itself. All of life is blessed. Whether you choose to participate in God's blessing or not is your choice. You can go with the flow and know God and enjoy what He does for you by giving you sunshine and rain, by giving you cheap, inexpensive items, or maybe giving you prosperity in some way that you get to be wealthy and do all kinds of things that, you know, wealthy people do. Worry about money, worry about this, worry about that, worry about the other thing, you know, have to go play, play, play in order to keep up with the, you know, lifestyle of having money. I kind of like not being wealthy, you know, because if everything were taken away from me today or tomorrow, it doesn't phase me a bit. <laughs> you know why? I've had it done to me. <laughs> I've had everything and I've suffered the loss of all things. I have been abased and abound. I have been up and down. I have been sideways. You know, I've been facing death already. And very matter of fact, I love the idea that early on in my Christian life, I faced terminal reality, meaning that God allowed a disease to come into my life to cause me to look at death and go, oh death, where is thy sting? Because <laughs> I'm ready to go. Let's get out of this thing. <laughs> uh, bummer. I had to stick around. Oh well, 35 years later, I'm kind of glad I did. You know, it's kind of 
interesting to see what the world has done and where people have gone in the name of the sun and what they are enjoying doing living and being with their life even as much as I'm enjoying my life now oh there have been times of trial and tribulations I've gone through the ups and downs of marriages and divorces I've gone through disease I've gone through famine and harvest I've gone through the great revivals I've gone through the great manifestations of God in his spirit I've seen those things that you know miraculously God can take a person the soul to where he chooses to reveal himself I've seen how heaven can be opened up one day and closed as though it were like iron gates the next I've seen what God can do with a soul that's living to breathe and to exist for the sake of God himself and it's marvelous to watch and see how God manifests himself in that life you know like your life how God can work in your life today how God can move in your life in a special way that I can see Jesus in you and be blessed because of what God can do I'm thrilled with that because I'm kind of thrilled that you know all my plants, all the flowering plants, all the vegetables that are growing, all the life that is giving back to God, thankfulness. You know, right now there's a great sense of peace. Right here. Right now. On this porch. It's almost as though the Prince of Peace were sitting here and everything became calm and still. I like that. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statues and keep my judgments and do them. As he which has called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation. He that says he abideth in him ought also to walk with him even as he walked. If you know he is righteous, you know that everyone that does righteousness is born of him. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. So whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all the law. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Our ability is in the Lord. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. The God of peace make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. You know, it's easy to sit down and plan out your own life. It's kind of like this plant, you know. This plant can plan out every single thing that it wants to do. But you know, all it's going to do is grow. That's the only thing this plant can do, right here, right now. This plant can grow, and it'll keep trying to grow no matter what I do. I could stop watering it, and it'll keep trying to grow. I could give it lots of water, and it'll try to grow. I could put it in the dark and it'll try to grow. I could put it into shade and it'll try to grow. As a matter of fact, I could take it out of this pot, put it into another pot and it'll try to grow. It'll keep growing no matter what. That's your life. You are going to grow no matter what. Now, it may grow deformed. It may grow halfway. It may not grow as full as it could potentially because I may put it in too small a pot and get it root bound or I may put it into with some other weeds and it'll get all choked up, you know, and eventually kill it, but it'll still keep trying to grow. But that plant can't change its own function. It can't determine for itself what it's going to do. It is already pre-programmed to grow. But I get to influence where, how, and if it develops into a fullness of growth. That's what God does with you. God will take you and move you to the place he wants you to be. You could be a plant of honor, of glorious development, of like, wow, look how beautiful that flower is. You know, like these purple flowers over here, or these red ones, or the ones that oh, smell delicious. You know, sometimes flowers smell so good you want to eat them. <laughs> okay, maybe you don't. 
But to me they do. They smell good enough to eat. <laughs> but the point being is that God is working in every single life. Every life has purpose, meaning, and design that God has chosen to use based upon their own decision-making process that they've pretty much, you know, God knew what they're going to decide, so He planned out all their choices that they would make and knew whether they would be good choices or bad choices. He knew ahead of time what you were going to do, so He planned accordingly. Now, if He knew you were never going to accept Him, then He's planned you out as a vessel of wrath. He's going to use your life anyways. So He's going to accomplish His purpose, and you're going to wind up in the wrong place at the wrong time being the wrong thing, which is a vessel of dishonor. But you could be, you know, like a planting of the Lord, which is like, wow, look how beautiful it's growing. Wow, look at all the little leaves and the intricate detail. And look, watch this, I'll give it more water and I'll place it in the right place for sunlight and I'll give it some shade, you know, and I'll make sure that it grows up to be full and complete and a blessing for all those that see it. Because you are a planting of the Lord. You are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. And really, the only work you have to do is what you normally do, which is grow, which is be what you are meant to be. And that's how simple it is. That's how easy we are to be. That's how much we need to let go and let God so we can be at peace, not just in the world, but we could be at peace with God. We could be at peace with our circumstances. We could be at peace every day. Today, if you hear His voice, not only harden not your heart, as it says in the provocation, but if you hear His voice, and he says, be still, or peace, be still. Then stop for a moment, look around you, and enjoy the moment God has given you. Because it is the day that God has made. And you can rejoice and be glad in it, no matter what your life has done, or you have done with your life. Because you'll see, just like the planting of the Lord, only the gardener knows where he wants that plant to grow and how he wants that plant to grow and when he wants that plant to grow. So he cultivates it according to his plan, not according to the planting's plan. So you may have your own plans, but guess what? Doesn't make a difference. The gardener knows.